Hey guys, Malcolm Moore here. And in today's video, I'm going to run you through the complete beginner snowboarder progression. We've got Alice and Elspeth here. They've never snowboarded before. So today, we're going to walk you through everything from first timer to first turns and beyond. Okay, are you ready? So I'm basically stating the obvious to the girls here. This is a snowboard, these are the bindings, let's go. So find a flat spot to put the board down and ensure the board is facing the right way around. Then clear all the straps out of the way and put your foot flat in the binding. Make sure the back of your boot, so your calf muscle, is pushed up against the high back. That is a big plastic bit at the back. Then just crank the ratchets down to securely connect your foot to the board. And you might find it helps to kneel down behind the board to do this. To get used to having the board attached to your foot, you can lift it up, slide it left to right, and by putting your toes up, you can dig in the heel edge. This will act as one of our two brakes on the snowboard. Then by stepping across the board, we can dig in the toe edge, which will be our second way of braking and controlling our speed when we're riding. Now we're gonna practice some skating. Obviously when we snowboard, we don't have ski poles to push ourselves around when it's flat. So to get from A to B or on and off chairlifts, we take the back foot out and push ourselves. A bit like we're on a skateboard. This is a really important skill to learn, so it's worth spending a bit of time here. A lot of good snowboarders still struggle to skate, but once you get the hang of it, it is really, really easy. Just place your foot behind the board and take small steps to push yourself forward. Just don't take big strides or you'll end up doing the splits. You can give it a go with your foot on the other side of the board, but I find it much easier with it behind. Try and keep your head up and don't look down at your feet. That way you can see where you're going. You're not gonna squash young Charlie who's learning to ski, but most importantly, it's a bad habit that you don't wanna bring into your riding further down the road. Next up, we're gonna go for a little slide. Potentially one of the most crucial and often overlooked exercises to do when you're learning to snowboard is this straight running task. Simply, it seems like an exercise to get you used to sliding on the snow, but it's also a great way to get students standing properly on the board with their weight in the right place. So do not skip this part. Correct posture is the foundation of good snowboarding, and if you get it right, all the movements we're about to learn to turn the snowboard are gonna work much, much better. Alice, doing good there, lovely stuff. Give yourself a little push and then place your back foot on the board next to the back binding. From the bottom up, your feet should be completely flat. Push your knees out slightly so they're stacked over your ankles. This is going to give you a wide centre of mass that will help you balance, but will also become very important later on. Your hips and your shoulders need to stay perfectly in line with your board, only your head is turned to look where you're going. And the final thing is to ensure that you keep your body perpendicular to the angle of the slope. So this is the slope and this is you. As the slope tilts, you need to tilt with it. Now granted, this slope here is pretty flat, so watching this, it won't look like much. But trust me, on your first day, this will feel pretty steep. And getting used to that sensation of leaning down the slope, keeping weight over your front foot, will also become crucial later on when we want to start turning. You get the theme here. This stuff we're doing right now is all gonna be super important later on. Next up, we're gonna add in a little hop. This is a fun exercise that will get you warmed up, but it will also test your balance. If your posture is out of line, and not how I just described it, when you land your jump, you're gonna fall over. So it's a good litmus test that you're doing everything else correctly. And just a quick note, look where I'm doing this. We haven't learned to stop yet. So I'm on a gentle slope that flattens out at the bottom. Don't be making your grand do this at the top of a run, because you're gonna die. Cool, so the girls are getting good balance now. And walking back up, this time we're using the toe edge like a ladder to dig in the snow. This is a great way to walk up steeper slopes. So we'll give the exercise a couple more goes, and then we'll head further up to find something a little steeper, because the next step will be to turn the board onto either the heel or the toe edge and get it to stop. And whilst we go there, just have a look how much better the girls are at skating already. Hey, practice works people. Come on, let's do this. So let's start with the most basic turn, the J turn. Once you've picked up some speed, you want to pull the board around and come to a stop on your heel edge. Okay, but how did I do that? There's a lot going on. You can see my shoulders, my hips, my knees, and even my ankles working. Well, I'm going to quickly cut in and introduce you to an analogy that simply explains all of those movements. An analogy that will not only work for this turn, but for all of your snowboarding turns moving forward. 
I want you to imagine that you've jammed two ski poles into your snowboard boots and they're extending up along the line of your shin bones out past your knees to make two levers that you can hold here. As you push them, your knees bend, pressing your shins into the front of your boots and your hips sink forward. This is our toe edge position. We're gonna come back to that later. Just like that. As we pull the levers back, we stand up, our feet flatten, and we're in the position that we started in just a moment ago for that straight running exercise. This is a neutral position in between both edges. So then if we keep pulling the levers back, our hips will start to sink back. And it's like you're gonna sit down on a chair and you, feel, you will feel your calf muscles resting in the back of your boots and your weight going down through your heels. This is our heel edge posture that again, we will come onto shortly. Now, we can also move our levers independently, forward and back, as well as left and right. And you will see how by doing this, we can influence the board to change direction and to turn. And especially it's the lever from the front foot, this lever coming up and out of your front boot that can really turn the board where you want it to go. So let's put this analogy into action and see how it works. Starting in the neutral position with both feet flat and then just pulling that front lever out and around to pull the board round onto your heel edge. So as I turn the front knee around, you should feel your front foot roll onto its outside and then back onto its heel. And as the ball comes around, the back leg just follows and I sit back into my heel edge posture, both levers back. A little tip to make things easier for your first time is to hang your heel off the back of the board. This stops your foot slipping on the top of the snowboard and your boot acts as a brake in the snow. The most common beginner's mistake here is not keeping your weight over the front foot. Remember what I said earlier about pushing your knees out wide so that your front knee is over your ankle. So we saw Alice there, her weight went over the back foot, therefore her lever at the front wasn't working and she slipped out. So Elspeth, she's starting to get it, but she could still do with pushing that front knee out and it stacked over the ankle. Imagine you have a beach ball between your knees, really pushing them out. And guys, the best thing to do is just give it a practice. So you're gonna see that Elspeth, she keeps giving it an extra go, and therefore progresses faster than Alice. Her front leg is still very straight, which means she kind of has to kick her back leg around, which is why she over-rotated there. But the more you do it, the better you will get. So let's move on to that, the toe side J turn. The lever analogy here holds down too. This time you're just pushing forward with that lever. So you should feel the shin bone of your front leg pressing into your boots. As the board turns, you look back up the slope and for the toe side position, you finish with your hips pushed forward, stacked over that toe edge. This directs the weight down directly over the edge, giving you grip. So one more time, make sure your knees are pushed out wide, push forward with that front lever, keep the head up and finish with the hips pushed forward. So let's give Elspeth a watch. So starts off well, nice little push. Knees could be pushed out wider, but she's making it work. But just watch this at the end. She looks down at the snow, that puts her hips back, flattening the board, and she loses grip. So second go, things are improving, but just let me show you something. In that turn, Elspeth leaned forward with her shoulders. So if you follow the line of your spine, that is where you are directing your weight. So Elspeth was sending it right down here behind her board. If she changed her position to this, she will send it down over the toe edge exactly where you want it. Now onto Alice, and she needs to stay stronger through the core. So when she starts the movement up here and pushes that lever, it actually continues down through her body and turns the board. Cool, but doing good guys. I'm doing very picky to help you out here. So we can see Elspeth starting to get it, pushing that lever around, the board does start to turn. Back to Alice. So in this one, I can see already her hips are a little bit back behind the board. And that's gonna make turning off the toe edge very difficult. So stay strong through the core. And as you push on this imaginary lever, make sure you're actually pressing your front shin into the boot and pushing your hips forward as well. You know, you can't just push this lever because it doesn't really exist. The back leg will follow naturally. And also if you grab a learner's front hand to guide them around, that can help get them the movements too. Voila, perfect. So back on up, a few more goes here, but this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to introduce you to the feel of turning, which is always initiated by that front leg. And that is how we can control ourselves on a snowboard when we get off a chairlift with only our front foot strapped in. So as I say, it's a vital skill to learn, but right now on day one, we can move on to the next drill. We're gonna get better at that. 
So we're taking the magic carpet up and really this is the most straightforward lift in the world. It doesn't need much, ex much explanation. If you need to use a button lift, you can watch this video up here. So moving on to the toe edge side slip. This means sliding down the slope backwards in the toe edge position. Once again, I'm just explaining to keep both knees pushed out and it's very important for the toe edge to keep your hips pushed forward. If they go back, as I said earlier, and we saw with Elspeth, you can slide out and catch your edge. So that's what I'm showing right there. My hips are back, I'm sending my weight back. So you really need to make sure you push the hips forward. If you want, you can imagine you're a kid, you're at the toilet, this is how you stand. Not the best analogy for you girls, I know, but it works. You can visualize that. So, right, this is it in practice. I now have both feet strapped in and I'm sliding backwards very slowly because this is a very mellow slope, which is where you want to start. So notice how my knees are bent, pushed out wide, and my hips are forward. And the key is to try and relax. Let your equipment do the work. By that, I mean don't tense up through your body. If you get your weight in the right place, you will feel your shins really pushing into the front of your boots, and your boots that are strapped into your bindings will tilt the board onto its edge, and that is gonna do most of the work for you. So first, get strapped in. We do a very glamorous teddy bear roll, like that, and Elspeth will show us how. Perfect, and then it's really easy to just push yourself up onto your toe edge. And once you, or whoever you're teaching is up, the first thing to do is to get into the correct posture. Elspeth here is doing great. So it helps you can walk down with them, so that's what I'm doing here, just to reassure her more than anything. You can see she's barely holding my hands, but I'm there if she needs me. So she's staying well centered, with her weight going down evenly between both feet, and I'm just giving her the odd reminder to keep her head up, thus keeping her hips forward and spine directed down over her toe edge. But guys, for a first attempt, this is awesome. Some people this can take quite a few runs to get the feel of it. As you can see, I'm just starting to let her go a little bit as well, get used to doing it on her own. So now if we take a look at the back of Alice's board right there, you can see a little bit of snow building up. This is because her back edge is catching in the snow. And this is the first warning sign of an edge catch. I'm not too fussed because I'm there to grab her if she falls, but I need to make sure she just pushes her hips forward a little bit more to stop that back edge catching in the snow. And also you can start to see why snowboarders hate riding flat slopes. There's such little clearance between your raised edge and the snow. So any slight error with your posture will be enough to make you catch an edge. Whereas if we were doing this on a steeper slope, there'd be much more space under the board, therefore you can get away with some bad habits, which is why you often see riders get down steep slopes fine and then stack it on something mellow. But if you learn the fundamentals now, you won't get that problem later on. And if we refer to the lever analogy for this exercise, both levers are pushed forwards with equal pressure going through both. Okay, back on up, out the magic carpet, and this is only small, but you can see how the skills we learned right at the beginning of the lesson are now helping Elspeth and Alice oh, slide off the magic carpet and then get out of the way. Super stuff, I'm getting out of breath, cramming it all in here. Okay, so give me a quick watch here to see how I strap in. I'm gonna roll around and I'm gonna get up onto my toe edge. A bit of trouble with my bindings there, getting cranked down. You don't need to do them too hard, by the way, just so your foot isn't gonna come out. Okay, so you put yourself at a right angle to the slope, and then you need teddy bear roll around, push yourself up, and then straight away, you're gonna to need to get those hips forward. So we've moved on to something a little steeper this time, but the fundamentals remain the same. Hips forward, head up, and shins pushed into the front of your boots. Try and relax, and make sure you're not tensed up, and you can always give your toes a little wiggle, just to make sure they're not scrunched up. Perfect, just like that. Okay, enough of that, we know I can do it. So onto Elspeth, she's doing great. So I was confident she had enough control to tackle this slope on her own. She's looking quite rigid, but she's achieving the desired goal. So that's more than good enough. And if we just watch her at the end here, she figures out to kind of make a turn on her own. Showing you that just by practicing, you will start to figure out things on your own as well. Moving on to Alice, let's have a look. There is Definitely improvement, as we'll see in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's wait for her to get up. Okay, so she's up and you can see her hips are still a little bit backwards. And she's not really sinking her weight into the front of her boots. Therefore, to get the edge to dig in, she's gonna have to tense up her calf muscles like that to lift her heel edge up. This gets tiring really, really quickly. It's a common beginner mistake that you definitely want to avoid. 
you do this for a couple of rounds, you're gonna be seriously cramping up and you're just not gonna to wanna to snowboard anymore. So make sure hips forward, get that weight in the right place. Your life's gonna be a whole lot easier. All right, what's next? So overall, I was very happy with the girls' progress. So we're gonna head on to a slightly longer slope, giving us more practice time. And before we start again, it's good to practice getting into the right posture without the board underneath your feet. So you can see my heels are lifted up, but I'm not physically lifting them. It's achieved by just sinking all my weight into the front of my boots. It's called the toe edge, but you're actually stood on the balls of your feet. You should keep your knees nice and soft, and you can have a little bounce here, as though you're about to jump up some steps. And of course, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, keep those hips pushed forward. Super important on the toe edge. Now let's move back to that lever analogy. If you want to start going left or right across the slope, you simply pull the lever out to the side, meaning you look over your shoulder and pull your front knee out to the side. To slow back down, both levers push forward again and you look back up the slope and you bring you back into the toe edge side slip. You can then change directions by pushing your other knee out and pulling that other lever to the side. Okay, so just like that. So you can see, see things start to move a lot quicker here. Only a very slight movement with my knee out to the side is enough for me to start picking up speed. But remember, you can always push both levers back forward and look back up the hill, and that is gonna bring you back to the safety of the toe edge side slip. Regain control there before you attempt to change direction. I'm trying to get this nice zigzag down the slope. Okay, let's see how the girls get on. So really good balance and control here, but we can see Elspeth isn't moving that effectively across the slope. To be better at this, she really nice to, needs to try and push the front knee out a little bit more towards the nose of her board. And obviously the front knee changes depending on which direction you're going. If you're not sure whether you ride regular or goofy, that is left or right foot forward, it doesn't matter too much to start with because we will practice both ways. And as you do, one of the directions will begin to feel more natural. So we're gonna do left foot forward to the left, come back to the center and push the right knee out to go to the right, giving us a chance to do both directions. But yeah, really good stuff here from Elspeth. I'm just gonna be super picky so that you guys can really get the most from this. Right, so let's give Alice a little watch and we can see she still needs a little bit more help getting there, but she's progressing at a completely normal rate. It can take some people a really long time to get even here, so don't be disheartened if you feel like you're not improving. The first day of snowboarding is the hardest day of snowboarding, and it is true that the bunny slope will be the most difficult slope you ever do. But yeah, even just after another 10 meters or so, things are improving. She's starting to get it on her own. But you can see her still really tensing up and using those calf muscles, which is gonna tire her out. So back to Elspeth, you can see her right foot forward is not really her natural stance. She really has trouble pushing that right knee out. And, but yeah, she's still got it. That's good. Weight back to center to slow it back down and switch around to the other side. There we go, good, get control. Now, as we see, going left foot forward, better posture and she's having more success. Now I'm gonna be really, really picky here because although the girls are doing amazing, you guys want to learn what you can from them. So when Elspeth, Elspeth sorry, wants to slow down, I would like to see her sink lower into her boots, really push both levers forward, and that would increase the pressure going through the board and cause it to grip more in the snow. She's gonna get away with it on this mellow slope, but say we're on something a bit steeper, it's really not gonna work, and she's gonna have to be more active, get down lower in that toe edge position, push both levers forward to really slow herself down. As I say, I am being picky, I apologize. But she's completed the task, so on to the next step. So far, we've just been zigzagging across the slope, but it's time to learn what is called the falling leaf. This is where the board turns more down the slope before coming back across. If you imagine a leaf falling in a gentle breeze, you should make that pattern in the snow. So that's where the name comes from, but perhaps that won't help you all that much. So let's go back to our levers to show how we are really gonna start turning the board. We always wanna build on what we've just learned one step at a time, so we'll start in the toe edge side slip, going backwards, both levers push forward. Then we're gonna start pulling one out, round to the side, once we're going across the slope. Okay, that's the new part. We're gonna really pull the lever out and around, not just to the left, but kind of round. Imagine like you're opening a door with that lever, with that front hand. And as you pull it round, you should feel your weight move from the balls of your feet onto the outside of your foot. 
you can imagine you're trying to kind of twist your foot out of the binding. So let's give it a go. Start off nice and slow, and then watch what happens as I pull that lever around, as I roll my front foot, my front knee around. Damn, easy. And of course, I can repeat the movements just going in the other direction too, with my other leg as the front leg. And then at the end, you just reverse them, pull the lever back, to come back to your side slip. All right, let's give Elspeth a watch. Okay, so. Right, again, being picky here, you can see that she's more just kind of pushing her front heel down, kind of pulling that lever back, rather than pulling it out and around. Okay, similar issue going switch, but still pretty good. Really not bad for a first try. She's kind of almost completing what I wanted her to. So, and as she continues, I can see that when she starts turning the board down the slope, she's not keeping her upper body perpendicular to the slope. Remember that was the first lesson we learned in the straight running exercise? And because she's not committing to leaning down the hill, it puts too much weight on the back foot. And because all turning is initiated by the front foot, and that includes turning back into your side slip to stop, She's taking too long to slow down and therefore too long to regain control. So wait on the front foot there and if she then brought that lever back around she would stop a little bit quicker. She took her a bit of time there. But real good. She getting it. Nice. So now ideally I'd like to practice this a bit longer but Alice's legs were cramping up and that's because she was still tensing her calf muscles up on the toe edge but no bother we can go on to learning the heel edge. That said, I always like to start on the toe edge for a couple of reasons. For one, it's much easier to stand up than when you're on the heels, but also beginners generally find it a little bit scarier because you're going backwards. So when you do move on to the heel edge afterwards, it almost comes as a bit of a reward. You know, you get to kind of see where you're going. And what I'm going to do here is explain it in three steps because we're going to do all the same things on the heels that we've just done on the toes. So first, it's the heel edge, the heel side posture. Remember, it's like you're gonna sit down on a chair behind you. Both levers are back, therefore both hips are back, stacked over your edge. Then, same as on your toe edge, you're gonna push your right knee to the right to go to the right, bring it back to slow back down, left knee to the left, to yes, to go left. And once you've got that, you can add in pushing the lever of the front leg forwards a bit and rolling your foot onto its outside to start the board pointing down the slope to start that falling leaf exercise. So, start in the heel edge posture, go to the right, go to the left, and then we can push the levers forward to start the board going down the slope. So that's what I'm doing there, push that front knee forward, the board flattens, I'm holding it for a while to get past those people, and then I pull it back to slow yourself back down. Now, obviously I don't expect the girls to get all of that right away, but they understand the steps because we've just done them all on the toe edge. So now once they feel like they have the control on the heel edge, they know what to do next and they can progressively introduce the movements themselves and understand the effect that they have on the board. And this is really the best way to learn. Something will stick much, much better if you can figure it out for yourself. So I'll let them practice and I'm here just to give them a little nudge in the right direction if any bad habits start creeping in. So that's worth getting the zigzag in there, really nice. You're just gonna get that control before she moves on to the next step. That's perfect. Posture's not bad, she's still quite rigid, but really good. So let's have a look and see how Alice gets on. Okay, down she comes. Okay, so straight away we can see that her shoulders are really forward, which is actually putting her weight forward and we want it all going down over that heel edge. So she's kind of having to counteract that by actually physically lifting her toes up to lift up the front edge of the board. And that, again, like what she was doing on the toe edge by lifting her calves, is gonna get really, really tiring and she's gonna fatigue quickly. So if she just actually stands up a little bit, just pulls those shoulders back, if you were then to follow the line of her spine, it would be going down directly over the heel edge and she'd be getting the weight in the right place. So just very slight changes with your posture are gonna make a really, really big difference. But good control, good balance, doing really good. We're only about two hours or so into the lesson. So now looking at Elspeth, on the other hand, she has a really straight back, but also you can see she isn't really bending her knees much at all. So, and yeah, because she doesn't have very bent knees, she's kind of struggling to sort of come to a stop. She just kind of keeps going. Whereas if she really kind of sank down into her boots, 
got that weight back a little bit more, you should have much more control and be able to come to a stop better. And also, once you have bent knees, your levers are gonna be a little bit more effective as well. If you're just really tall, it's hard to get them working. So get down a little bit lower, remember that beach ball between your knees, really pushing them out, and that's gonna allow your levers to work effectively. You can see she looks a little bit out of control, but pretty good, pretty damn good. Okay, so we're gonna jump forward. We're now gonna put all of those movements together and try to link up some turns. So the sequence is gonna go like this. Heel edge side slip, you've already done that. Push your front knee out to the side to start going diagonally, you've done that too. And then start pushing the front lever forward, so pushing that front knee forward to turn the board down the slope. We do this in the forming leaf exercise and then follow with the back lever. So you stand up into your neutral position that we held in the straight running exercise at the start and then just gonna push that front lever down, hips forward, head looking back up the slope like when we completed that toe side J turn. So there's a lot going on and it's all gonna happen very quickly when you actually do it in practice. So you can see here, I'm just pushing that front lever forward, the back one follows, the ball comes round in a nice C shape. From toes to heels, I'm just gonna start pulling that front lever around, keep weight over the front foot, start looking round to the left and just keep pulling it round, that's a much easier one, onto your heel edge. Okay, so they're like, uh, what? Are we actually gonna do that? I feel like we've only just started snowboarding, but yeah, they're gonna get it. All right, so let's watch them get up. Okay, so here is side slip to start with. Now she needs to start coming across to me with that diagonal. And with your turns, think of making a nice S shape, a nice S shape, sorry, in the snow. She flattens that front foot, she needs to get the hips forward there, but awesome. Okay, she just made her first turn. Really, really good. So now coming from toes round to heels, she needs to pull that left knee out and round to the side, look over her left shoulder, round onto the heel edge. Perfect guys, linking turns. That's the first major milestone of snowboarding. So really good, but not perfect. So let's unpack it and see what could be better in order to help you guys. So firstly, I wanna see both knees pushed out wider. Remember that beach ball that's in between them. That's gonna allow you, allow you to make these lever movements more effective. So next, as she comes onto the toe edge, she's not bringing the hips forward across the board, which makes the edge change difficult and it makes it hard to control yourself on the toe edge. So as soon as you come through from heels to toes, cross those hips over the board as well. Okay, so Alex, she's just not quite there today, so I'm gonna keep practicing some of the previous exercises and it will come. She doesn't know this yet, but future me does. I've seen her. She's gonna be turning very soon. So we're gonna go to this exercise, which is really, really helpful for people when they're learning. I'm just gonna go on the inside of her turn. So when she's on the toe edge, I need to walk around behind her. I'm just gonna guide her around with that front hand. She's making all the movement with her feet and her knees, but I'm just there to kind of give her some reassurance. You know, I can push the hips forward there as I am, if they need it. And it's just gonna help keep her weight forward. But I'm, oh, I can't speak, sorry. But I'm making sure her hand is out over the front of the board. That keeps her weight forward, and that means that front leg is gonna work effectively in getting her to turn. So, as I say, I'm really not doing much here, but she really is turning the board really well. You can always stick your foot under the edge there to give them a little rest. Explain it a bit more, but really practice is gonna be the best thing here. She's gonna get it. You know, she's got everything there. Sometimes people just overthink it a little bit as well. Okay, so let's go in for another one. So start on the heel edge side slip, come out diagonally, watch out for that guy. That's it, push that front lever forward. Hips need to come forward now. She's a little bit late there, but got the turn done. Really good. And if I just do this a few times with her, she's gonna pick it up, and in no time, she's gonna be doing it on her own. So another good exercise to do is just to stick your foot on the end of the board there, let her go, and then she can complete the turn herself. So she's just doing the second part of the turn. By just breaking it down into small pieces, it's gonna become much, much easier. We have a little breather. Back up we get. So this time we're gonna do the same thing, but onto the toe edge, foot on the end of the board. I make sure before I let her go that she's got weight over that front foot and she just pushes that front knee, that front lever forward and hey presto, the ball comes around onto the toe edge where she regains control. Keep doing this a few times, keep practicing and it's gonna get easier and easier and easier. Let's have a look. Wait. So in this next clip, I just want you to have a look at my turn shape in the snow. 
So I'm making a big C shape in the, in the snow. And it's really important to always try and do this. If you go into a turn without first traversing across the slope, you can easily catch an edge. But if you're following the nose of your board, it's easy to just roll from one edge to another. And as we actually start to ride faster, all these movements we've been doing are actually gonna become quite a lot easier. So let's give Elspeth a watch. And you know, we can simply put, simply put, sorry, we can start moving our levers together to turn from heel to toe edge. All you need to do is push the levers across. You stand up to get in that neutral position and then straight away push them down and sink into your toe edge position. Let's give it a watch. Levers forward, stand up, levers down, toe edge. Now as I do the next turn, Levers pull back, I stand up, and camera cut. Sorry about that. That same theory. Okay, so let's try and watch this with Elspeth. So both the levers are back, she's coming across the slope, pushes the levers forward, stands up, her feet flatten. Now she can push them forward again and then sink the hips forward onto the toe edge. Okay, so why do I need to learn how to work my legs independently? All this lever nonsense has just got me spinning around in circles, and all I need to do is stand up and down. That's what you might be thinking, right? But there are a few good reasons why you need to get your legs working on their own as well. The first reason, uh, and this is day two by the way now, we did about three hours on day one, just so you have a rough idea of where we are. But the first reason is at slow speeds, as in when you first start riding, you simply don't have enough momentum and edge control to just stand up and rock from one edge to the other. So you need to learn how to slowly skid the board around where you want it to go. The second reason is that by learning how to move your levers, you know how to make micro adjustments to your turns to control exactly where you're going. And that's what, if you watch closely, you can see Elspeth actually doing right there. So sometimes it's nice to simplify things, but you will actually always be using the levers. And the third and final reason is that if you just move your body up and down, rocking from edge to edge, it makes these big wide open turns are great on mellow slopes and great for carving. But when we want to start riding steeper slopes, we need to make smaller tight turns and those turns really require you to torsionally twist the board by using your legs as levers to get the desired outcome. And for a look at how the lever movement can help you do that, take a look at this video up here. So back to the task at hand. Alice, she still needs a little bit more practice to work on her edge control before we can start turning. So here's Elspeth. She has too much weight on the back foot and that happens. So remember, always leave with, leave with the front leg, okay? But it's a new day, some bad habits will creep back in. It's gonna take a minute to get back into it again. So I'm gonna do this exercise I did with Alice yesterday, with Elspeth now. It's me just explaining to keep your upper body perpendicular to the angle of the slope. Otherwise, it's gonna be really difficult to turn the board. So, my foot's on the board. That's me saying, don't lean back. Lean forward. Okay, it might feel like you're really putting a lot of weight in the front foot, but just because we're trying to stay perpendicular to the angle of the slope, you know, it is actually more kind of like 50-50 weight through both feet. It just feels like you're leaning down the slope. So you really need to be confident, get that front foot flat, get that knee pushed so it's stacked vertically over your front ankle, and then it's going to make the whole turning process much, much easier. Let's let that go. Let her go, pull that knee around. You can still see, uh, you can still see it's a little bit inside the board, but really not bad. Same thing on the toe edge. It's me just saying, get the weight over that front ankle and then just push that front knee, that front shin, that front knee into the boot. And as you do so, the hips just come forward and the back leg follows through. It's the front leg that really, really does all of the turning. All right, hey, watch out for them. Make sure you've got a clear slope. And off we go. Push that left knee forward, look back up, lovely. Cool, so let's give Alice a little watch. Still kind of guiding her through the turns. Toes, round to heels. Good, so you can see it's a bit sort of juddery. She's still quite tense if she relaxed. It's just gonna smooth that skid out. And you know, we've got most of the information, most of the technical information we need now. It's just the case of practicing and putting it all together. You know, sometimes a little bit of guidance is needed, but at this point, you know, you or whoever you're teaching, they're just going to kind of need to figure it out on their own. As long as they're doing all the key things right. So that is heel edge, hips back, toe edge, hips forward. And you know, using that front foot as a lever to try and pull you around. Then as long as you're doing all those things, you will start to get it. So let's have a look at Elspeth. And although she's turning, I still want her to sink down more to get more grip on her edge. And this will allow her to then extend her, ed her legs, sorry, to help with the next edge change. So standing up helps bring your hips up and over the board. It's not a big movement, 
but without doing it, it's difficult to transition between your toe and heel edge postures. You can see that's what I was doing there. It's not a case of this to this, but <laughs> you. It's not a case of getting down really low and then really high, but a little bit of movement is gonna help you. Okay, so falls happen as well. Don't worry guys, dust yourself off, get yourself back up and you will get there. So let's give us a bit of a watch. Ooh, too much weight on the back foot, but she just held on to it. Good heel edge posture. So she's gonna start pushing that left knee forward. And if she stood up a little bit more there, that was pretty good actually. It would come around a little bit better. So good toe edge posture. You can see our hips are forward. Still push that left knee out and the board will come around a little bit smoother. But yeah, really, really good. So we're about four and a half hours in now. And this is really good progress to be turning within the first kind of five hours of snowboarding. Okay, Alice is ready, she's back up. Okay, let's see what she's got. You can see she's really working on getting those hips pushed forward, that's nice. Wait a little bit over the back foot, which is quite, well, it's quite a juddery end to the turn there, but really good. Nice, she's getting it. Cool. You can see she's getting more confident now. She went down there, but got straight back up. She's starting to feel it click. Good, toes to heels. Okay, so let's have a look at Elspeth. So she had those big turns down really well, so I'm gonna challenge her and make her turn within a really narrow corridor. Imagine you don't have much room on either side of you. So this is a great exercise to really get you using your legs independently to bring the board around in a tight arc. So even if you're turning, there's still plenty you can do on the beginner slope to challenge yourself. Let's have a look. Awesome. And just look, you know, you can count how many more turns she is getting in now in that narrow corridor compared to when she was doing these turns, for instance. But, you know, it's good to practice them both. And yeah, she's doing really well here. You can see the snow softening up as well. It's getting quite slushy as the sun's out, which is gonna make things feel a little bit different as well. It does make it a little nicer. If you do fall over though, it's nice and soft. So you saw there, because Alice had too much weight going through the back foot, that's why she kind of over-rotated at the end of the turn. Let's see what happens here. Watch out for Indy. So heel edge a bit better, she didn't over rotate too much. But yeah, when she came from the heels round to the toes, too much rope through the back leg, then it started spinning her round. And you see it's actually put her into a bit of switch there. And now she's got confused and she's gonna try a switch turn, which she almost actually gets. But yeah, we haven't started them yet, so don't stress about that. Okay, but as I said, practice makes perfect. And you can see now, just a couple of runs later, things really are starting to click much more balanced than the snowboard. We've moved on to a different slope where the camber of the slope, so that's which way it's tilted, changes a little bit as well, which is gonna sort of change things up for you and make things feel a little bit different when you start on that sort of perfect slope where everything's uniform, and then you move to something where it's a little bit, you know, bumps in different places. It can really throw you a little bit, but it's good practice as well. You know, you wanna start trying to ride lots of different slopes. Just watching her here, so you see that front knee, it's still in a little bit, but she's doing really good. She's got strong heel edge posture there. Controls her speed really nicely. Okay, that's it. Get that weight over the front knee, good. You can see that front knee pushed out, that's nice. And if she just keeps pushing her shin into the front of the boot, comes around to the toe edge. Keep the head looking where you're going, looking over that shoulder. You can see if she's looking quite down at her feet. Just by looking up sometimes, it helps out some issues with your posture. But this is awesome. You know, we're turning now. And once you get to this point, things are just gonna really move rapidly. Everything's gonna start moving really quickly and you're gonna progress really, really fast. Yes, awesome. That's really, really good. So yeah, about six hours in now and already turning. Don't need too much more technical information from me. Just keep practicing. Guys, honestly, I can't stress this enough. Once you get to this point, you are just gonna take off with your snowboarding. You really are. Okay, let's have a little look at Elspeth. Good, good toe edge posture. So her head position is nice, she's really looking where she's going, which is why you can see she carries a little bit more momentum. Weight's still really over that back foot, but as I say, six hours in, this is awesome. Thanks for watching guys, I'll leave you with this. Our final run, we've hiked up a little bit to get a bit of a longer one. It's quite slushy, but let's see how they do. Alice coming in first making some nice turns.
difficult. And learning to snowboard is a little bit like learning to ride a bike. At the beginning, it's really, really tricky. And you know, when you're going slow, it's really hard to balance. Same thing when you're snowboarding. At the start, when you're going slow, you know, it feels like these movements are not working. It's really hard to get the board to turn. As you can see here, as soon as you start going a little bit faster, balancing, turning, once you've got that little bit of momentum, everything just cut becomes a little bit easier. And you can see Alice is moving more kind of as one unit now, just kind of rocking her weight between her toe edge position when she wants to turn, just standing up, brings your hips across the board, and then you can sink back into that heel edge position. Nice and easy. Comes across the slope, stand up slightly, push the hips forward, it's just a little bit late on that movement, but pretty good. Brings her onto the toe edge, head looking over the shoulder, into the next one, up and down onto the heels. Not bad. Here comes Elspeth. All right, let's watch Elspeth coming in. And as you can see in the snow here as well, I said it's kind of slushing up. By the afternoon, it's got really slushy here. We're kind of, I can't remember what month we're in, maybe in April, but it's really warmed up. And that makes the snow quite bumpy. And if you're making these nice big S-shaped turns and following the nose of your board, it's really easy to get through the slush. But the more you start skidding and just side slipping, the more difficult it's gonna become. You know, if the nose of your board lifts you up over all those lumps and bumps first, it's then going to kind of flatten it out underneath your feet. Whereas if you're side slipping and skidding a lot, you're going to hit everything with both feet at the same time and the edge of your board can catch on those bumps as well. So think about that nice shape, Elspeth's got it here, coming across on her toes, back on her heels, just rocking from one edge to the other. Same thing with Alice, let's have a look. Get more weight on that front foot. A bit picky, she's doing real good. <laughs> Coming across on her heels, nice, round onto her toes. You can see that was quite skidded there, and now she gets her weight in a better position and that pulls her better across the slope. She leaves that nice thin line in the snow rather than really kind of just kicking her back foot out. Ooh. So yeah, there you have it, okay? This girl was six hours ago, couldn't snowboard at all, and now they're making their first turns. If the lifts were up and running, we'd go into a longer green slope and then the progression would really, really just take off. Literally every single turn they make, they're going to be getting better and better. So just these few pointers are really going to help you out, get you going in the right direction. Practice is the one thing that's going to take you there. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Boom.